Hi, welcome back. I'm Miss Benita, and I'm helping out Miss Fung, my Denver teacher partner in this project of bringing you videos for the unit changing landforms. Today, we're finishing up part two of the second lesson in the fourth chapter, modeling how landforms erode quickly. There are two activities in this video, and we're going to continue to model, but this time we're going to model how wind erodes landforms. You will be watching a video, uh, a video inside a video actually, and if you have the packet to answer questions that are posed along the way, then you can use that packet to record your answers or any piece of paper that you have in your home and a pencil will do. Also, if there's a family member available to watch this video with you, the two of you can talk about what you're learning together. It's always nicer to learn things with others. Let's get started. We focused on water, but it's not the only thing that erodes landforms. Remember our, I'm going to call it our, our thinking chart here. How can landforms erode quickly? We've been adding things to it. So let's think about what other things can erode landforms other than water? Write down some of your ideas. What do you think? Huh, okay. Let's dig into the handbook of land and water. I found something on page 14 that I'd like to read aloud to you. How beaches can change fast. Sometimes erosion happens quickly. Beaches are made of sand or other loose material, so they are not as stable as some other landforms. One storm can erode a beach fast because a lot of material can move at once. If storm waves and gusts of wind hit a beach with enough power, they can carry away huge amounts of sand in a single day. So we did mention big waves and powerful uh, rainstorms happening that can erode quickly. Let's add that other point here, gusts of wind, okay? Now, let's take a moment to visualize how wind could erode this landform, the sand dune. You will find the next set of questions in your packet. What did you picture in your mind? You may want to pause the video and Think about these questions and talk them over with the family member and jot down some of your thoughts and we'll revisit them in the video, okay? All right. Oh, some of you said, wind could cause the sand to blow off the top of the sand dune, causing the landform to change. I will now use a model to demonstrate how wind can erode a sand dune. The mound of sand represents a sand dune. Let's think about what blowing through a straw represents. All right, here's that video inside of video. Wind erosion model. This model will demonstrate how wind can erode a sand dune. This mound of sand represents a sand dune. It's our model. I will blow through the straw to model wind. Now observe what happens to the sand dune when I blow through the straw. It's a close up. Let's discuss what we observed. What did you observe happening when air was blown at the mound of sand? The sand moved. The shape of the sand dune changed. It even had a little divot in it. That's like a, like a little hole. What do you think would happen if we blew air at the chunk of chalk? Would wind cause the chalk to erode? Why or why not? We are using the chalk to model a rock landform. Wind cannot easily erode it because it is solid and hard. That brings us to a key concept. Wind and water 
can erode the landform quickly if the landform is made of loose materials. Remember, we're investigating these two cliffs. This one is uh, by the Recreation Center, and this is a cliff nearby. Do you have any new ideas about cliffs? Let's think for a moment. Going back to our, our thinking chart, right? We can add that landforms made of loose materials erode quickly. Okay, this, we're going to end this video with this activity, introducing making models of streams. Again, streams are hard to study in real time because change can happen very slowly. So scientists use models to decrease that time scale so that they can study it. Think about the chalk model and the sand model we investigated. Why do you think we used both models in the same lesson? How did that help us better understand erosion? Again, these are questions that you can jot down your answers to in the packet. Just pause the video. All right. Using both models allowed us to compare what happened in each. We could then see how loose materials erode faster than hard or solid materials. Why do scientists use models? And why haven't we been, and why have we been using them, right? Because models help us to observe things that we really, that we can't really easily see in the real world. This book is about a water scientist named Chris, who uses a stream model to make observations and to answer questions about real, how real streams work. Why do you think scientists use evidence from models when models are so different from the real world? Be thinking about that. We will revisit this question in the next lesson and we will also be reading about Chris and how he uses models of streams in his work. There are differences and similarities between models in the real world. These differences and similarities help Chris, the water scientist, answer questions about streams. In this lesson, we used a sand model to investigate the idea that loose materials affect how fast a landform erodes. In the next lesson, we will build on that understanding that scientists make models to answer questions about the real world. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I do look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.